Hey there everyone, my name is Forrest Emmel. I'm a freelance illustrator slash concept artist. And today I'm going to be making this character design for you guys from start to finish. Uh, but the video is not so much about the character design as it is about studying habits. A lot of people, when they first try and become concept artists, when they first go on their, on their concept art journey, uh, a lot of people are kind of confused about studying. I know I was for a really long time. I didn't really get a good grasp of it. Um, and it, a lot of people don't explain it the best. If you have an online sketchbook or you're in Facebook groups or something, most people just tell you to study, but nobody tells you how to study. And it can get pretty frustrating. Uh, I personally would get very frustrated, and I wouldn't totally understand people when they told me uh, certain things, like to do figure studies or to study value, I wouldn't know how to go about that. So hopefully this video won't only be for beginners that are struggling with knowing what studying is, but it could also help uh, more advanced people that have been studying for a while, but just want to get better at retaining information and applying it to maybe their freelance work or just their personal stuff in general. So hope this video helps you guys. So we're going to jump right into it, and so what I've done is for this Queen of Stormhaven, that is what the uh, character is called, is for a challenge, so you can't judge me, uh, I've gathered a bunch of royal regal looking uh, armor and reference off of Pinterest, Tumblr, wherever, and I've gathered it all together. And right now I'm sort of just getting a feel for how to do someone royal. Um, like right now, this is, uh, some sort of a, like a breastplate that Daenerys wears on Game of Thrones, uh, and I actually use this in the final design, but it's more of like a neck, uh, sort of like a neck chest protector type thing. So, basically what I'm doing, other than getting a feel for royalty, is I'm expanding my visual library. Because right now, my design sucks. I don't know how to design certain things, and the only way that's going to get better is if I learn different things of design. The reason I can't make a cool armor design is because my imagination is so limited. And the only way that I can expand that is by drawing more things, you know? So before, uh, like already, it's expanded. This That breastplate that I just painted, I now know how to paint that. These designs that I'm painting right now, and all these notes that I'm writing, all of that is now expanding my imagination. I now know these different designs, and I know that th they are used pretty often in royal, royal kind of designs. So now if I ever want to do a character in the future, simply just from imagination, then I could just use that armor design that I just studied. So now I'm getting into the first design that I'm doing, and the poses that I started, I... God, it's awful. Uh, I end up doing some gesture studies later, and it makes the poses a little bit better, but it's incredibly stiff, and I should have started with gestures. Anyway, right now, even though I just did some designs, I didn't do that many. So my imagination is still very limited, and as the video goes on, it's really cool to see how my designs get so much... Not only do I am I able to design things faster, but much more confidently. You can see that it, I no longer really have to think so much when uh, I do some of these designs later on. It just Everything just comes to me. I just know that there's these different parts of different armors, and I can use this and this, and it's really, really cool. So right now, you know, I'm just freaking... I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm throwing an eye patch on there because I was like, hey, maybe she'll be a tough chick or maybe she can have a crown and it just looks stupid. Because, <laughs> like I said, like my imagination is so limited right now. Uh, even that shoulder, I don't even know where the hell that came from. I was just like, hey, I'll just throw a shoulder on there because, you know, cool. I don't get it. Uh, I am throwing some, some of those regal designs that I studied. I put that... Uh, that sort of neck chest piece that I was talking about on there. Um, and I'm trying to keep in mind 
uh, at least what I've learned. Even if it doesn't make for a good first design, at least I'm trying to retain the information that I just learned for the next design. Because I plan on doing many more after this. Even now, I, I know I'm going to do at least probably two more. I end up doing four more. Um, so now I'm starting to do some gestures. And a little bit of a disclaimer uh, before I go on is that these aren't gestures. Uh, at the time, I didn't know what gestures were exactly. I guess I did, but I refused to believe it. Um, when you do gestures, don't do this. Try and take the figure and break it down into the simplest strokes. You know, like the whole body, try and get one line for that. A whole arm, if you can, both arms, get one line for that. And build off that, and just, that's the point of gestures, is to make it seem like a figure in the least amount of lines possible. Uh, I didn't get that with these studies. Um, however, they did help me do figures later on, you'll see. Uh, but they were, they were mainly a warm-up. Um, so now I'm back to armor designs. So I went back to Pinterest and Tumblr, gathered a whole bunch of different images that are like, oh, these are kind of cool, I could probably take something from this. Um, even if it's just one little thing, I still usually will grab it and study it. So here I'm doing some shoulder studies, uh, trying to break it down. As you can see, I've kind of breaking, broken the, uh, the shoulder down into three different parts. Uh, try to figure out how they're layered. Uh, I don't know if I actually use these shoulder designs later on. I think I do use this, like, scale uh, tabard kind of a thing, though. Um, so, usually what's going through my head when I do this is just focus. <laughs> uh, I just... No matter what, I try and retain this information. Um... I'm a lot of the times I'll listen to classical music. I'll try not to listen to music that I will sing along with because it keeps me distracted. Um, it doesn't keep me thinking as much. I'll often, as you can see, I'm writing notes. I will do that with freaking every study I do. I will be writing notes for. It helps retain the information so much better than just thinking things. Uh, it's it's kind of like if you were to to say something out loud. Once it's, once it's either written down or said out loud, suddenly there's, uh, it's almost like there's words to it. But when you're thinking, your thoughts are kind of all over the place. And you're thinking, I don't know, just all sorts of things. And it could get shoved into the back of your head. And you just won't remember it as well. So now I'm doing more shoulder designs. Went to a, went to a different image. Trying to break things down, writing some notes. And... Uh, this goes on for quite a while, and, oh god, especially, yeah, I think that these shoulders I end up using <laughs> pretty dang often. I don't know why, I just liked, I liked the, the look of them. And this is definitely... The way that I study is definitely uh, based around the way that Alex Negria studies. Um, he does the exact same thing for, for all of his armor. Uh, I don't know if he takes... A, uh, yeah, he, he probably takes maybe more notes than I do. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, the, you know, the notes don't matter. It, it <laughs> didn't want to make it sound like a competition. Like, it's just whatever will help you learn, basically. Uh, if you don't really learn from notes, don't write notes. It's totally up to you. Uh, this is all just hopefully meant to be not fully adopted, but adapt my techniques to work best for you. And that's hopefully what I'm getting across with this video, is you're, you don't have to study like me. Obviously, this isn't like, you know, the one true way to getting better, but... It's a way that works for me, so hopefully you guys can take something from it. And my studying habits are adopted for many others. Like I just said, like I, I started doing this because I saw it worked for Alex Negria. Uh, the whole doing studies during an illustration and breaking off to go and do studies for it, that's adopted from Brad Rigney. Uh, I heard that he did that in his Massive Black video and immediately was like, well, 
if if that's how Brad Rigney does it, then I gotta try it, and I love it. It works very very well for me. Um, I don't know, you know, exactly his techniques for studying. Uh, I tend to, and you'll see in this video later on too. I tend to only do about thirty minutes or so on each study. I don't take a long time to do it. Um, just try and stay focused. Uh, the studies end up being very, very rough because I'm only after one thing usually when I study. Um, and that's, you know, if I'm studying metal, then I'm only going to be paying attention to the material. It doesn't matter if there's leather on the armor that I'm drawing or, you know, whatever. Don't get nitpicky with it. Just study what you're meant to study and move on because otherwise you're dilly-dallying and if it's stuff that you're not even really going to apply, then it's not going to you're not going to retain that information very well. So here I am, on to another design. Uh, I forgot to film uh, the second design that I did. It was shit anyway, so it doesn't matter. So uh, trying to just kind of get you know weird with it. I don't really. I'm I'm basically just mixing and mashing together all these different armors that I've been studying and uh, trying to make it look good, I guess. Yeah, oh, yeah, pretty much all these. Yeah, those shoulders, shoulders on the other side, the, the armpit guard thing, so I, I always forget the name of. The, uh, the scale tabard thing. Um, threw in a cloak, because, you know, cloaks make everything better. Uh, there are certain things, like, I don't think I had those Super Saiyan leg <laughs> things, um, or studied them. Uh, I definitely get not quite as comfortable with, uh, the leg armor, and, uh, I think I actually study that a little bit more on the final design, and so I feel more comfortable on the very last design. Um, and like I said, when you, when you see the last design, everything, it just comes to me. Like, it's just, because of all the design studies that I've been doing, and that I've been applying every armor study that I've done to all of these other designs, it's like a great big armor mashup of everything. Um, and it's that's the main design that I base uh, the final character on. However, I do take little bits uh, from some of these other ones and kind of mix and match. And, um, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with, with the final design. Uh, not so much with how the character looks. Uh, and that's probably just, you know, lack of doing gestures correctly. Could have probably done a better job at studying the figure before I jumped in, but oh well. So, going back to armor studies. And, I mean... This is pretty much what I do for a while, at least for the sketch phase. Uh, but it really does help quite a bit. Uh, and, I mean, as you can see, this is a design from Soul Calibur. And yeah, I'm ripping off of already made designs. It's okay. I don't think anybody's going to sue me. Um, and if they did, then they should probably have better things to do than sue some kid. Uh... So, I don't think I end up using that uh, wolf design. And, although I do, uh, yeah, I do write some notes about it. I do use the, the bracers and the, uh, the elbow guard there. Um, and I use a lot of the uh, markings or the uh, engravings on this design. Pretty much the whole, uh, the whole leg armor of this, actually, uh, I really, really liked. And I use that in the final design, I think. Uh, and I kind of have uh, that same um, shoulder cloak hanging off the shoulders uh, look because I thought that was really cool. And you don't you don't really often see that kind of thing. So you know, I wanted to steal that, but I didn't steal much else of this. It's not you know all Hilda from Soul Calibur or anything like that. So, I thought it was alright. And the whole the whole point of, of doing these two uh, that I, I kind of want to stress is 
don't don't stress so much about making a good image uh, because the truth is for a long time when you when you start studying uh, the image isn't going to turn out very good um, I'm I'm not happy with this image in the end uh, like I said the the figure kind of bothers me uh, the anatomy bothers me a little bit um, and I mean the armor works and that's kind of why I set out to to make this it still turned out to be a good portfolio piece uh, I think it's gotten me some work um, even though uh, it could be better so back to uh, some more armor studies I actually didn't get the uh, fourth sketch design uh, filmed unfortunately uh, but that's okay and that's the one that I applied all the uh, the stuff I learned from the Soul Calibur design to and you'll see some of these uh, images that I'm studying right now uh, like this one that I'm doing I'm actually gonna do another study later on of uh, where I study the the metal of it not so much the design but um, because that's what I'm focusing on right right now is simply design, but I'm going to be focusing on the actual material uh, later on. But these are, uh, yeah, these are the last last little bit of uh, studies I do before I go on to the to the final design. And uh, I do have, I have quite a few uh, resources that I've I've bookmarked, um, and I, I'll be sure to leave some of those on the description for the video. So if you go down below, I'll I'll have a whole list of, of different things. I know I, I talked about gestures earlier, uh, and I didn't I didn't get. Uh, too detailed about it. I'm not the best person to talk about gestures with, obviously, since I wasn't even doing them correctly. Um. Oh, like this is a perfect time right now. I'm I'm looking at a chainmail, uh, and I go online and trying to find some some good chainmail brushes, uh, because I don't freaking want to deal with figuring out how all the rings are. Are connected. If somebody else did that first, then then by all means. Uh, so I'll leave uh, I'll leave a link to this chainmail brush. I'll leave a link to uh, some good videos to help explain gestures a little bit better than I can. I'll leave links to uh, a couple different Pinterests or Tumblers that are great for armor references for gathering uh, all these images up for. Um, a lot of these too uh, aren't specific tumblers. Sometimes I'll, I'll uh, just look up, you know, like Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones, especially Game of Thrones. Uh, I'll look up because I love the armor and that, and not just the armor, but everything, the clothing and all that. So here I am doing a shitty pose, and then, of course, if I move the arm down, it becomes so much better. And other than the poses, which, I mean, I, I became a little bit more confident doing, but not, not too much. On the side of doing all this, I've been studying from Hampton's Anatomy book uh, pretty often, and I can, I'll actually leave a, I'll leave a link to that down below, too, to uh, probably an Amazon link to that book. Because that book, oh, oh, I can't give enough praise for it. It's fantastic. It's the best anatomy book that I've ever, ever read. I've looked through Bridgman, I've looked through Hogarth, Hogarth, not Hogarth. Um, I've looked through Loomis, um, looked a little bit of Vilpu, if that's how you pronounce it. Uh, although he's more like gestural, um, doesn't really get into the uh, nitpickiness of anatomy. Um, but Hampton's book by far is the best one that breaks things down so easily, so simply. 
um, and it's helped quite a bit, um, quite a bit more than, than it, it has done in, in this video. Um, and the reason why I noticed the anatomy mistakes I have now is because I've been studying from that book. So, as you can see, this design went way, way, way quicker than the other ones because it's it's on it's a whole collection of all the design studies that I did for this. Uh, at the end of the video, you'll be able to see all the studies uh, that I've done for this whole character design, and all the design studies uh, make up quite a bit. Um, and I I have something filling every spot in the armor, um, as opposed to my first design where, you know, I wasn't sure what to do with the legs, or I wasn't sure what to do with uh, maybe the elbows or the shoulders, but on, on that last design, that, that didn't happen. There, there weren't really any hiccups in it. And that's just what comes with studying uh, different armor designs like that, building a visual library. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm actually kind of going through some pose exploration for the final design. Um, you know, a big thing with character design isn't just the design, but how the characters pose. I thought this was a bit too much of like a, you know, badass, like, cocky, super heroine kind of a pose. Not really a, a queen, uh, which this pose is definitely a little more interesting. Um, for a design a little more open uh, than just her kind of stiffly walking, but uh, hopefully I I kind of got a um, a more regal sort of royal stance happening in the final final design, and that's what I was going for. Uh, it's not quite as interesting, but it fits it matches the character's personality uh, that I was that I was trying to go for at least. So I actually do some more poses than just this one, but I thought I would include this into the video anyway, just to show the whole process. Uh, I do at least, I don't know, uh, I think I already did one before this, it looks like, on my layers. And I think I do probably two to three more after this one. And I don't start adding the armor onto it, I basically just get the anatomy and the the pose and gesture in quotation marks. So like I said, it's not the gesture. Now I'm starting to work on that. But yeah, I just kind of get the uh, the nude figure in place and then when I decide on the pose then I uh, begin to add the armor on, sketch the armor on uh, on, a, on an upper layer and then I start to uh, lasso it all in and uh, lock the layer and basically just start painting from there. It's not very interesting uh, <laughs> process and uh, you don't really get to see that part. Um, I wasn't the best with filming the, the various parts of making this image. So you don't see me, you know, lassoing everything and and painting and filling it all in and but that's okay because that stuff is boring so here we are getting to a little bit more interesting studies um, like I said I didn't get the beginning process of the character design I picked a pose sketched the armor all in I've blocked in uh, the colors now now I'm just studying uh, metal material um, which hasn't I haven't been uh, the best at lately, and so this was a good opportunity to to try and fix that, do some studies, try and learn from them, and uh, I think it I think it paid off a lot in the end. Uh, this first metal study that I am doing, um, when I apply it, I end up kind of making it seem like there's a sky in uh, the character design when she's just surrounded by gray nothingness. Um, and I quickly fixed that, but it, from what I learned from the design, it was easy enough to still apply uh, without, you know, having to pretend like there's some sort of uh, ambience all around her that actually isn't there. Um, what I'm thinking about is just values, for the most part. I know I started in color, but 
uh, when when I have been doing these studies lately, um, the main thing about metal and I guess other uh, materials as well, like cloth and leather, is they have it, it, frickin' everything, I guess. Everything always has the same form. Um, there's always a highlight. There's always going to be shadow. There's always going to be reflected light, um, ambience light. It's just, you have to sort of know how it works for different materials. For the metal, the highlight is much, 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 much more uh, reflective. Everything about metal is more reflective. Um, even in the shadows, you'll still see a little bit of reflection. Um, and you'll see me kind of uh, take some notes on these, too. And, I, you know, I don't try and break it down, get really scientific with it, and figure out why exactly metal looks the way it does and all that. Just, you know, if it looks like metal, then it's good. <laughs> and I don't know if that's lazy or whatever, but that's what I go by. And I, I mean, by the by the end of the of the character design, I think I think I did an okay job at at doing some convincing metal. So one thing that I've been noticing also a lot with uh, artists lately is that a lot of people will be doing really really like pretty looking studies. You know, they try and get it as close to the image as possible. You know, people would be including, like, the background and all the little nicks in the wood. It's like, why? You know, why are you doing that? Uh, I That shouldn't matter, you know. Like I said, I'm out, when I do studies, I'm out for one thing. Right now, I'm out for learning how metal looks. There's no point in doing the, he, he doesn't have to hold the metal rod. I don't have to do all the metal on him. Because uh, that's not going to help me understand metal any better than, you know, if I just did one piece. Uh, just be specific. So here we are. Here's the character so far. Nothing too interesting. I started kind of getting that, like, reflectiveness down and decided, well, I'm not doing so great, so I'm going to study some metal. And so that's why I did that armor guy. And here, like, like I said, you can start seeing me put in, like, some sky. I don't know why. I thought maybe it could look cool. But I quickly changed my mind. Uh, start throwing in some reflectiveness. Uh, I learned that, you know, things still show up pretty pretty dang well, even if the uh, metal is in shadow. Even if the thing that's being reflected is in shadow, it can still show up, depending on how bright it is. Um, and, I mean, like I said, it's not exact, but it <laughs> it's good enough. Um... There, there's definitely some things that uh, realistically would look better, but for this design, it would have probably caused some tangents. Uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's with the arm, either the arm or, uh, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, the arm with the sword, uh, with the metal. I, I don't think it would have, it would really look like that, but it. The way it really would have looked, would have kind of looked a little weird, and just, I don't know, would have bothered me. So, I'm just hoping people don't care or don't notice. Yeah, the blue just did not look good at all. No, that looked terrible. Yeah, so there I am going, desaturating it. I think I leave it a little blue, but I don't know why, because I'm using a warm light. No, I think I, yeah, I think I make it warm, actually. So, basically what I'm trying to think about here is just what I just studied from the metal. Um, and, like I said, it, it's not perfect, but if it looks like metal, and, you know, the, some of the reflections look, you know, pretty good, whatever, then it works. Like, I, like I have, uh, I think on the right, yeah, on the right side of the body, I have some stuff that looks like it's being reflected, but there's nothing there. And that's okay, because <laughs> it helps uh, convince people that it's metal, so it works. I mean, you know, if you want to get nitpicky with it and say that nothing's there, then whatever. Like, That's okay, but I, I don't have a problem with it. So, pretty soon here, I kind of stop applying the metal uh, 
because I got a, I got a good grasp of it. I don't really apply it to the legs yet. The legs, I, I take a while to do. I kind of want to get a good understanding of uh, of everything else, make sure everything on the upper body is good, and it probably isn't good. I probably should have uh, spent an equal amount of time on uh, the whole body, but oh well, it's done. And there's some other studies that now I probably would have done. I probably would have done a cloth study or something uh, for the cape. Uh, so here I am doing a, uh, a hair study for the blonde hair, uh, which, oh, God, it, it was really, it was driving me nuts, too. Um, not only doing the study, but uh, e even applying it, uh, it bothered me till the very last minute. Um and I honestly, I, I probably should have done another one too, because I still didn't feel very confident with it. Either it was too saturated, or uh, like to the point where it looked almost like a almost like cartoony blonde, like it was too uh, too yellow orangish, too too bright. Um, but when I when I did this study, it was such a I don't know. There's an equal blend of of desaturated and saturated. And um, it, it's going to take a few few more studies before I really learn why that is. And I mean, th this is pretty much how I treat all my all the studies that I do is. Uh, I try and make it quick. I think this one lasted about 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, because it was a little frustrating for me. Um, it was fun, because it was so frustrating. Um, and then, after I do a study, I write notes. I try and... I, if I think of a note while I, while I work, then I'll write it down. But usually I kind of save the, uh, the notes for later. And here I go. I'm talking about the the midtones, the shadows, and the highlights, how dark the hair gets. Because it's very bright hair. Uh, and you might not think about it, but it still gets dark. You know, I it still has ambient occlusion in, in the darkest parts. However, reaching that ambient occlusion can take a little while. Uh, you got to get really thick in the hair before it starts uh, getting very dark. So here I am applying it. Like I said, probably made it a little too saturated. I think I desaturate it later on, because uh, I, I go back to the hair a couple times. Um, and I just, I don't know, making convincing looking hairs, just, it's very difficult for me. And that's just more studies I gotta do in the future. To work on it. Uh, I think I've gotten a little bit better lately, but still just not quite happy with it. It looks too, uh, looks too organized to uniform to me anyway I want you know if there's hair blowing in the wind and stuff it, it gets a little messy it's not so uh, it's not so perfect that's uh, that's something people have been telling me lately on on different forums like uh, perma noobs and the crimson daggers forums that my work has been looking a little too uh, perfect I guess that's that's the word that some people view and I it's not a good thing it, yeah, I need a little bit more uh, messiness in there, a bit more random. So here's another study, uh, another metal one. Wanted to keep it fresh in my head. Uh, I think I actually, this was uh, probably the next day, maybe, and uh, then I did the other metal study and just wanted to apply it. Uh start the day off with some learning. Uh, and as you can see, I I blocked the colors in and then added the highlights. I tried to get the reflections in there and kind of what the colors of the reflections are, and then I added the highlights. And I think this is a technique that I, I kind of use later on. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, like, why, why exactly do, does this happen? When, uh, when do certain things happen? Uh when does it become really dark, and why is it really dark? Uh, why are certain textures there? Like, you can see on the outside of this, uh, I actually wrote it in the notes for this um, study, too, is 
On the outside of the helmet, there's little dings and little scratches, uh, maybe even just some, uh, some bits and specks of dirt. And that is on top of the reflectiveness. And I think that actually kind of gives some believability to the, uh, to the material. Um, and so I try to, I try to apply that to, to my final design also. And yeah, here's me starting to take some notes, starting to try and remember some things, and I'm about to apply them. And you know, this is just how I've studied for, for quite a while. Um, and I just heard about enough, uh, enough professionals that have done it, um, and, and decided to give it a shot. And even the note-taking thing, not everyone does it, but oh man, I, I have to recommend it. It works so well for me. And at first it was a little tedious, and I didn't even know what to write. I because because you think, at least when I when I first started, I would think like why why would I take notes? Like I I know what I'm doing exactly, or I know how to paint this thing. What kind of notes should I take? Um, but once you make a realization, and you write a note. You kind of you can't stop after that. Once you make one note, you kind of think of another thing, and you're like, oh, okay. Even if it's things that you already sort of know, it's still good to jot down. Helps it helps it stay in your head. And and really that that's all this is, you know, is uh, is trying to trying to retain this information so that you can apply it to things later on from your imagination. Because you know, it it gets to a certain point where you'll you'll just know how to paint metal, you know? You don't... Uh, it's still nice to, to keep it fresh in your head and do some studies for it, but you might not have to worry about it maybe if you're on a tight deadline or something, or if you just want to relax and do a piece for fun. You don't really want to want to have to worry about it being super awesome. Uh, but you still want that satisfied feeling of doing something that looks good. Uh, you'll just get to that point of of knowing uh, how to do certain materials and how to do different designs, especially. Um, like, I, I didn't enjoy uh, sketching very much in my sketchbook, uh, especially doing, you know, like, warriors and shit, because I like doing fantasy stuff. I don't know, it's kind of fun. Um, and my designs just sucked, and after I started doing these different design studies, it, it oh, God, it paid off so much. I feel much more confident doing designs... Uh, in sketches. So here I am doing a little, like an emblem crest thing on the corner. I don't know why the hell it would be there, but it looked cool. And really, isn't that all we care about? And I decided hey, I'll have some consistency and put it put it right there too. I really liked that too, the little, uh, little emblem crest on the chest there. And yeah, I didn't. I didn't do a study for the cloth. Uh, I thought I did a a pretty good job at it. Maybe not for the actual cloth, although I was, I really liked the border and how that turned out. I kind of did like a. Uh, I was thinking about like a silk blanket border, if you know what I mean. And I think it turned out pretty convincingly. So, I'm getting down to the last uh, last little bit of this design. It's starting to look pretty pretty rendered out. Um, yeah, now adding in those those little holes. I wanted to save that for last until I knew that the the reflectiveness was convincing, was believable. And I mean, there's always more studies you could do. I probably could have studied some leather for the belts. Uh, and like I said, I think I did on that one armor design, but I don't think I ended up filming it. Um, I, I could have done some cloth studies, probably should have done some more, uh, figures, uh, maybe some, some longer figures to try and get the pose down. Done some studies of people walking, something like that would have been good. But, I learned a lot from this. 
uh, and I, I still, I still remember quite a bit of it. And I'm able to apply that to the stuff I do now. And, and re remembering a lot of the stuff that I learned from doing this, uh, helps just so much as far as, as time goes. It makes me more confident when I paint it from my imagination. Um, if I have to do something else, I, I don't do things as, uh, quite as skittish or I'm not quite as nervous about doing certain things. All right. So here's a study of Sigourney Weaver, um, for the face. I thought she had a kind of pretty good tough chick face. Uh, she kind of got like a bit of a wide jawline, um, However, still looks pretty feminine. I thought she'd be a good queen of Stormhaven. And so, yeah, although I do a lot of my studies in color, because I like to consider uh, color a lot of my images, uh, just want to remind people that values everything. <laughs> Take it from a guy that doesn't know how to do values very well. Value is frickin' everything. My values were were pretty bad. They're still not that great. I'm getting a little better because I'm starting to consider them a lot more when I do illustrations and do images. I try and consider value separation and whatnot. But values everything. Colors, they don't really, it doesn't even matter if the values suck. <laughs> I mean, the, val the values aren't really right on this face either. The face probably looks a little too, like, a. Uh, a little too plasticky. I don't know if that's because a uh, lack of texture in the image. I use the soft brush quite a bit. Um, I don't actually think I end up finishing the study either. Yeah, I, I pretty much get what I wanted. Um, the eyes I thought were fine in my image. Uh, it was mainly probably the eyebrows, uh, the nose, and the mouth. I wasn't very confident with. So I wanted to work on that. So, that's it. Here's the final once more. Uh, I didn't get footage of me applying the, the Sigourney Weaver study. Uh, it only took a few minutes to apply, and hopefully you can see it in the final face. I'll leave a link to the final uh, on my DeviantArt page in the description below so you can get a closer look of it. And hopefully you guys uh, took something from this. Hopefully, maybe you learned a little something. Hopefully you will consider adopting some of my studying habits or techniques. And those that don't know very much about studying or going about improving, I really hope that uh, you guys learned something from this as well. Because I, I know what it's like to be in a rut with studying. For a long time, people would just, you know, people just blindly tell you, just, oh, study this, study that, but they don't tell you how. And it can be frustrating. And I didn't get into the, you know, the nitpickiness of like, oh, this is how you study value or this is how you study that. But hopefully I showed you how you should go about uh, applying what you learn into your final images because that is honestly how you learn quickest. Um, and, it, you know, go out and, and do your own studies uh Try and try and find answers to the questions that you have about uh, various things in art. You know, if you if you don't know about a form or about certain lighting or something, go and do a study. Try and figure it out with your own with your own eyes and write notes about it. And then immediately, don't wait. Just immediately draw something from your imagination and apply what you learned, because that seriously is it's one of the easiest surefire ways of of retaining that information in your head especially if if it's you know if it's just you if it's just you making this realization you're not having a teacher tell you uh what to do or how to think or this works like that if it's just you making this realization it suddenly becomes so much more important and it sticks in your head because you're kind of like holy crap like i get it like i i i just i realize that on my own so hopefully you guys go out and uh, and try and do that. 
And these are all the uh, studies that I did for the image. It's a little small in uh, the video, so I'm going to uh, leave a link to this on my DeviantArt page as well. And hopefully you guys will be able to see that, you know, you don't need to do perfect studies. <laughs> like, they're just to yourself, you know? Like, I know I'm showing you guys now, but I'm showing you guys so that you know you don't have to do the prettiest studies in the world. Um, now, I'm not saying do the roughest studies possible. If you're just starting out, you know, your rough studies compared to some other people's rough studies and the amount that you could paint in 30 minutes compared to the amount that somebody else that has been doing this for a few years could paint in 30 minutes will be pretty drastically different. I'm just saying take the time you need. Um, the appropriate amount of time. When it gets to the point and you're studying uh, or you're doing a study and you're just kind of brain dead, you know? You're not really making any more realizations. You're just kind of mindlessly rendering. It's probably time to stop and it's time to apply what you learn or it's time to write some notes and uh, maybe maybe you'll notice something or you'll have a question about something that you're not quite sure about and so then you can go back to studying it. But really, the the just the image perfect studies, uh, they're not necessary. I, I admire people's skill for that. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's great that you can do that, but it generally you're not able to get that uh, perfect sort of look with your imagination work. Um, because you're focusing more on making it rendered and making it look like uh, a very, you know, accurate representation of the image that you're studying instead of bringing that and making your own images as accurate as possible. So again, I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if this gets enough attention, which, I don't know, uh, then maybe I'll do another video. If you guys have any questions, then frickin' I'd love to, because this was really difficult and challenging, but kind of awesome to put together. Uh, and hope you guys, hopefully you guys learned something from it.